welcome back. Let's talk about messed up books. Welcome to the very first Psychological Thriller Book Club reading vlog. This month we read The Last Flight by Julie Clark. If you did not read it, I would come back to this video when you have because it is going to be full of spoilers for the book. But if you participated, read the book, um, I'm excited. Please make sure to leave comments down below so we can discuss the book. I'm most excited about that. If you want to participate in the book club next month, make sure you subscribe to my channel so you know when I announce the book for next month. Welcome to the first book club check-in. I am so excited to talk about The Last Flight with you. I think I'm like maybe 10 chapters in. I already have so many thoughts, so many things. First off, I'm really enjoying Julie Clark's writing style. I think it is really engaging and I just love the way she describes both of the women's feelings. I keep forgetting that I can spoil shit. Like I'm trying to talk around stuff like I normally do and I'm like, no, tell them all this stuff. They've already read it. It already feels really intense and I'm not very far into it, but the stakes are high. You know, Claire's trying to get away from Rory and Eva just is also very intense and a big question mark. Like what the hell, why is she such a badass? And such a liar. <laughs> Claire's first few chapters kind of broke my heart like that shit was sad and the fact that no one ever notices her bruises or if they do they just don't mention it because of Rory like ah but yet I feel it at the same time like how oh like putting issues under the rug just to maintain a public image kind of thing. Claire is so strong and I just feel her fear when she's getting ready to leave and she's packing up her stuff and she's sneaking around while Rory's sleeping. I'm like, oh my, <gasps> the tension. I really liked her relationship with Petra and Nico, like describing their childhood stuff. I thought that was really sweet and kind of how they reconnected and were able to help her. I don't know, Petra's, she'll probably come back, but she lost her phone number, so I don't know. One thing I found interesting was this quote that from page 16 that says, in this world, money and power were equivalent to immunity. And I've been thinking about that a lot lately, just kind of with everything kind of, I don't want to say this, but in the world and just different things that have been happening and how, um, I guess like if you have enough money, you're not as afraid to do things because you know, you know, you, you got the money to pay the ticket or the lawyers or whatever, bribe people, you know, whatever it may be. Rory's got like un, he's got unlimited financial power. And he's got all these people covering up his nasty, despicable behavior just because of that, because he's paying their kids tuitions and he pays their salaries and he's just this public figure, a celebrity, you know, and that's sad. There's not one single person who's like, nah, money's not quite as important as this woman's well-being or happiness. Not even to reach out or anything. They won't even talk to her about it. It's so, it's sad. And I can just, you can see this playing out in real life somehow. Like, this feels like a, a very realistic situation. And it just goes to show you that you just never really know somebody unless you really know them. You know, all the people we look up to, celebrities, you know, all of a sudden some allegation comes out about them and we're forced to look at them in a whole new light that we didn't think was possible. We thought they were this, this, and this, and they turned out to be this. And it fucks us up. But, I don't know, I've just been thinking more and more about how money is just puts you at the top. And also the fact that he's in politics, you know, and people view him a certain way. And I wonder how this whole event is going to affect his public image because we've seen time and time again that no matter how bad you may cancel somebody, you really can't cancel people, you know? And no matter, I mean, it does happen, right? Like really atrocious things. But a lot of the time when scandals come out, people let it blow over and they just go back to feeling how they did before. So I'm curious if that's how it happens here or if Rory's gonna get what's coming. Also, ugh, the dialogue about Clara losing her mom and sister is just so sad. Like, her, her sister is one year younger than my son is right now and thinking about a human that small passing away forever is just, like, gut-wrenching. And you can tell that Clara and her sister had such a good relationship and it's so sad. But I think it definitely... Um, fuels her and gives her the motivation to find something better. You know, she leans on her memories of her mom and sister and she's like, I can do better than this fucking asshole. I think just the book itself is written really well, really beautifully, and it really illustrates pain in a way that feels so real and tangible, and I'm really enjoying it so far. So, I'll be back when I've read a bit more. Um, yeah, I'm interested. What do you guys think about 
like how people act around Rory and how they just cover up stuff for him despite how much pain Claire is clearly in. What do you think like the amount of control that Rory and his assistants have over Claire's life? Like the part where she's her bag there and then the assistants unpacking it and repacking it with different clothes like that I felt violated. Like, that's weird. It'd be so weird to have people doing every bit of your life like that. Like I can't imagine that. No privacy ever. Oh, suffocating. <laughs> I'll be back. I cannot put this book down. <laughs> I've actually had to force myself to stop reading so that I could come and film this and then continue on because it's really good and I'm really liking it. So Claire's been living in Eva's home, kind of uncovering some of her secrets. She found these documents that Eva was preparing against her drug dealer, Kingpin Man, um, which she hopefully hoped to exchange for witness protection and to testify against him, but she has since found that she will not get witness protection. So she just dips out and goes and visits Liz, who was left and moved away. So now we know how Eva got to New York. She went to see Liz. And then right when I stopped reading, I found out that Liz's daughter may be Danielle, Claire's assistant or something. Claire received the recording from Danielle, which implicates Rory, kind of, lightly implicates him in his ex-girlfriend's death. There's a lot going on. I needed to stop so I could digest it with you. I really love Eva's story. I found myself looking forward to those chapters a lot, um, learning how she got to her drug lord status and all that. I love her inner struggles and how she discusses, you know, coming from nothing and the nunnery and how people view her now, um, constantly through the lens of, despite what you've been through, you've accomplished so much. But, you know, they only see it as so much because of where you've been, and if you were just a regular old Joe, it wouldn't be that impressive kind of thing. Like, yeah. I really, really like the discussion about knowledge as power, and Liz encouraging Eva to seek out knowledge about her past in order to possibly overcome it, and um, the bit where she learns that her grandparents are not living in a cute house with a white fence where they cook pancakes for breakfast and kiss each other every morning is not reality because she goes and visits them and she sees this cigarette filled smoke dump place with a couple crotchety old people and she's like wait I made this whole thing up in my head and I've been missing it when that thing doesn't even exist and was never an option. I think we can all relate to that a bit quite a bit like putting that thing up on a pedestal and wishing and hoping that we could have it when it's just not reachable and never possible and we just have to accept it. With the knowledge that that thing is not going to happen is the power, and I like that. Like, Liz is one of my favorite characters in this book, for sure. I love how she's constantly poking at Eva to open up about her past because, like, it's painful to talk about that stuff, but once you do and once you can, like, get it over to somebody else and shift your burden a little bit and let somebody else take it and tell you comforting things, and then you can kind of, like, accept and move on and grow stronger and, like, Liz, yes. She's like the real hero in this story, Liz. I love you, girl. I really feel like she's gonna come save the day. I don't know how, I don't know when, but I just feel that, that she's gonna, I don't know. I just love how much she cares for Eva and how much she keeps pushing her and encouraging her and saying, no matter where you are, I'll be out there loving you. And like, I just wanna cry. Oh, my neighbor was mowing. I hope you couldn't hear that. Sorry. I hope that Claire is gonna go on the news and like tell her story about Rory and expose him. But she also points out to the reporter that like people who do that, a lot of the times don't win and they're just looked down on and the man in power just continues on with what he's doing because he's so powerful in the first place and people don't want to see him differently. But I'm super interested to see how this develops and I've loved the writing and the messages so far so I feel like it's going to pan out into a pretty good like power story for Claire and Eva but I don't know. It could still end in tragedy. That's the beauty of thrillers. It could go either way. You just don't know. All right, I'll probably check in when I finish, and then we can discuss away. Let me know down below, like, what you were thinking around this time when you were reading it. Like, where did you think Liz was going to come in? How do you think the connection with Liz and Danielle is going to play out? I'm thinking, like, it makes sense. Uh, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate anymore because I don't, I don't know. Okay, bye. See you later. I have finished The Last Flight. I have to say, overall, I am pleased but not blown away. Let me know what you guys thought. <laughs> what is your overall take on this book? So I felt like the beginning was really suspenseful and really had a lot of mystery and thrill going on with Claire figuring out her story and then her leaving was really suspenseful and then trying to learn Eva and her story which was drawn out more but I just felt like the pacing really slowed down and then the end was just kind of okay. 
like I really like, I liked the message about you know starting over and being a survivor of you know a domestic abuse situation I thought it was good but I felt like it just left out so much and it felt like it could have been longer and there could have been more development on you know what happened after Claire decided to go public it just it, there was a time jump and we just missed so much of it that I felt like could have been really well explained by this author I don't know, I just feel like she would have done a great job discussing some of those things, you know, possibly the pros and cons of going public, you know, Claire was worried about a lot of possible repercussions that then were never discussed, so we don't really know if those things happened. Did people doubt her, or did they believe her right away? Did she get alienated by people? Like, did people treat her normally? How did it go? Were people mean to her in public? We don't know, <laughs> you know? And I think that I really would have liked to know that part of the story. But I did still like it, and I did still like the message that it had for, you know, overall. I just, I don't know. I found myself really enjoying Eva's portions more than Claire's, and it was kind of marketed more as Claire's story, so I don't know. I feel like if it had just been Claire's perspective, it would have been really dull. And Eva's suspense of her drug dealing and figuring out who was who in her story really drove it. And after Claire left Rory, I felt like it was a lot less suspenseful for her end. But I don't know, maybe you guys feel differently about that because, you know, she was, there was the cop. But I kind of figured out, like, that the people around were going to be, you know, the cop and Dex. There weren't any other people who they could have been, really. Like, we kind of knew that. You know, I don't know. Is it just me? Like, I just would have liked to see Claire fully prevail over Rory and exactly what that looked like, rather than just a new apartment. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah, that's part of it, and that, that is an important aspect of it, but I just feel like there's so much more there that we didn't get. I did like how she ended Eva's story, though. Um, I liked her demise in the plane, just because it kind of, I don't know, left you with more of a feeling there. But again, see, Eva's story was a lot more touching than Claire's was, but it was supposed to be Claire's story. But Eva's, like, really got to me. I felt like Claire's story with losing her sister was sad, but it just wasn't developed on enough to really matter that much to me, and I felt like Eva's childhood at the nunnery was a lot more leaned on and talked about and discussed and had a lot more relevance to today and her actions today and just her relationship with Liz and all that stuff, and Claire's was just kind of, you know, this stuff happened, but... Now it's about Rory. I don't know. Maybe I'm just really way too picky, but it's a 4 out of 5 for me. I enjoyed it, but it didn't blow my mind, even though I really relate to a lot of what Claire went through, unfortunately, but it still just didn't, like, hook me in the way that I wanted it to. But I still really enjoyed the book. Let me know what rating you guys would give this out of a 5. Thank you guys for watching this video. The next video I post will be next month's book club announcement, so be sure you look out for that and grab the book if you would like to participate again next month. If you made it to this point, like, thank you so much for being part of my book club. Leave a comment below and I don't know. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.